We're the mercenaries, yeah? There's me, yeah, I'm the drummer. The sensible one, of course. We've got John Jones, the fucking street poet from Camden, yeah? We've got Steve Rose, fucking bass monster. Mark Bradley, guitar wizard! Big night out. Big night out. I'm Clive Martin, your guide to the dark heart of the UK club scene. For the last episode, we went to hang out in Beelzebub's basement for a metal night. But for this episode, we were off to investigate the more sensitive side of guitar music, indie. When I was a teenager, it was all the rage. I remember hanging out in Camden, asking my mum to make my jeans skinnier, and thinking that Noel Fielding was cool. But with the Hawley Arms fire, and the advent of South London-based UK bass music, Camden became a cultural wasteland. A downmarket tourist trap for European exchange students to buy grinders and try to live out the Winehouse dream. But is the scene I knew and loved dead, or are there signs of life underneath its battered trilby? It was time to leave Camden's decaying corpse, ditch the Zulu jacket, and head to Shoreditch, the halfway house of the indie dream. Walking in, it was clear that this wasn't the glamorous world of indie rock and roll that Brandon Flowers eulogised in song. The smell of second-hand leather and third-hand pint belches festered in the air, whilst the sound of badly mixed 60s classics and people calling each other fella provided the original soundtrack for the evening. Primarily, the night was populated by your Burton's menswear lads, horizontally striped young Turks from mid-sized towns who wear smart shoes and think disclosure is trendy bollocks. Then, you had their dads, and the occasional indie Cindy to keep the male to female ratio just below that of another Melvin's reunion at ATP. The indie cliches were still to be found, but in a diluted, student union kind of way. The dance floor seizures, the Bradley Wiggins haircuts, and the worst array of hats outside of Ladies Day at Aintree. Even Richie Edwards decided to come out of hiding for the night. Yet the most unfortunate reality of indie nights came crashing with a flurry of feedback and bad on-stage banter. Live music. We're in a band all the way from Leeds. To be honest, I'd be quite happy guzzling water down lager and head nodding to kill a manjiro. But indie nights just won't let you do that. Instead, they force you to endure the rockstar delusions of local government employees who won't ever admit that they aren't Johnny Marr and cool science teachers who slip Kasabian lyrics into their homework assignments. Call me a club fascist, but there's something horribly incongruous about live music in clubs. They should really be about seamless dance floor ecstasy. The people picking the tunes, capturing the moment with their selections, not arsehole front men shouting out their girlfriends and telling you where the merch table is. Are you an excited boy in the trap? It's your mate's birthday! I didn't say you could get on stage, so I don't care if it's your fucking bar mitzvah, it's my stage. I'm not saying there's no place for live music, but come on guys, it's a club. Think Studio 54, think the Hacienda. You aren't about to break into Live Forever at Nebworth, and you never will be. But maybe I'm in the minority here. Maybe this is just the talk of another jaded Shoreditch wanker. What do you think, sir? Hey, I tell you what, a Shoreditch wanker, yeah, is somebody that's better dressed than the cunt that's calling him a wanker. I bought this hat from a small guy called Hawk in the Spitalfields Market. Well, the majority of the guys, it looks like I can bench more than them. I'm a diehard Laura Marling fan. I'm not saying that they're pansies, I'm just saying maybe I'm a little stronger than them. Hey, this is just my door key. It's not a fashion accessory, it's just to let me get my door. You need to talk about why the music is flourishing here in Shoreditch. Why are the curries successful on Brick Lane? It's because they combine it with music. The thing is, I don't remember Indie Nights being like this. And I don't know whether it's because I'm seeing it through John Lennon rose-tinted glasses, but this was more like paralytic PE teachers trying to dance to the Fratellis. Nothing about it was alternative anymore. It was like being in the Soccer AM studio rather than Warhol's factory. It just seems to me that somewhere along the line, the scene dropped its standards and instead settled for the lowest common denominator. I'm not saying Indy's dead, but my God, it's looking rough. The thing is, yeah, dubstep is like aliens, yeah? They've been trying to contact us for years, yeah? What we do is we download it, yeah? And we like dance to it, really? Come on. 